When it comes to the future matchups between the Straw Hats and Blackbeard Pirates, there's a few that seem pretty much guaranteed. Maybe Usopp vs. Augur, Chopper vs. Doc Q, Zoro vs. Shiryu, Luffy vs. Blackbeard, etc. But others are much more difficult to predict, particularly which crew member will fight Kuzan. Because on one hand, he's a near Fleet Admiral level combatant. He and Akainu fought for 10 whole days before a victor was finally decided. So there's probably only like a few Straw Hats who should even have a chance against him if they were to fight. But on the other hand, many people believe that Kuzan may not even stay on Blackbeard's side through the end, meaning that he wouldn't even be there to get a Straw Hat matchup. And this shouldn't come as much of a surprise because Kuzan's intentions have always been sort of clouded in mystery. I mean, his allegiance to the Marines was never as strong as some others, and like he told Smoker after Punk Hazard, I'm still me. If Teach were to task him with something that goes against his sense of justice, who knows what could happen. But at least for now, he is a full-fledged member, being the 10th Titanic captain. And if these pirate crews were to clash today, I think the crew member to take on Kuzan would have to be Sanji. And the first reason is honestly just sheer process of elimination. If Luffy is taking on Teach and Zoro takes on Shiryu, then Sanji and Jinbei are like the only ones who should really be anywhere near Kuzan's level. And if you've been following my series for these matchups so far, then you'd know that I talked about Jinbei's matchup as well as several others already in this playlist that I'll link down below. Plus, you know, the fact that Fishman Karate requires requires using water, even in the form of moisture in the air, probably means it wouldn't do too well against Kuzan who could just freeze it all. But what would be a good counter to that is fire, such as Sanji's Ifrit Jambay, making this like a clash of fire versus ice which could have so many interesting aspects to it, especially compared to Kuzan's experience fighting Akainu, because Sanji's starting to use hotter and hotter flames thanks to his German enhancements and his hockey. But another important reason why this fight makes a lot of sense is simply that Kuzan just helped take pudding from Whole Cake Island. Sanji is obviously not going to like that when he finds out. This could be the start of a potential direct conflict between the two, and one that could come to a boiling point by the time these crews finally face off. So I want to use this video to first discuss Kuzan's true intentions on Blackbeard's crew, then I'm going to dive into why that makes this the perfect matchup for these two characters, and then lastly we'll cover how this battle will shake out and what power-ups we can expect to see. But first, I want to talk to you guys about why I've been using Aura the sponsor for today's video. So I know that seeing me on camera might come as a big surprise to some of you guys since I don't usually show my face in my videos, but times are changing. But what isn't changing is the fact that data brokers are trying to sell your data to scammers, robocallers, or pretty much anyone who can try to make a buck off you. And I'm talking everything from your name to your relatives and even to your health records. I mean, here's me searching my name online and all of this stuff here is personal information that I had to blur out and it's all just available to data brokers to get a hold of and sell. And that is exactly why I started using Aura. They'll send opt-out requests to those who are selling my data, which then not only reduces the amount of spam I get, which is a huge benefit in and of itself, but also protects me from hackers who might be trying to access my important information or accounts. Like, I don't know if you saw this, but AT&T revealed that over 72 million customers' information, both former and current, were released on the dark web, which is just sort of insane, right? And they recommend that those affected use strong passwords, monitor account activity, and maybe consider getting fraud alerts or even freezing credit, which are all things that Aura does for me already. And just in one place, instead of getting a bunch of different apps to accomplish the same things. So if you want to get started, you can get a two-week free trial by using my link below at aura.com slash daksake, which you can also find down in the description. Thanks again to Aura for sponsoring, but let's get back to the video. So as for Kuzan's true intentions as part of the Blackbeard Pirates, I decided to run a poll about this exact question to see how you guys felt, and nearly 90% of respondents thought that Kuzan was going to betray or defect from Blackbeard at some point. And it's easy to see why this might be a possibility. Despite doing some unsavory things as part of the Marines, Kuzan does seem like he is a pretty decent guy. Obviously he saved Robin, and he even spared the Straw Hats after Long Ring Longland, and you know, he didn't really have to. Sengoku recommended him over Akainu for Fleet Admiral for a reason, and even though he's on Teach's crew and has been since sometime during the time skip, he told Smoker after Punk Hazard, I'm still me. I would honestly argue that him betraying or defecting from Blackbeard almost seems obvious at this point, which is pretty much the reason why I don't think Oda is gonna go that route. It would simply be way more interesting for him to actually be backing Teach, and I think the context in which Kuzan joined Blackbeard is kind of proof that he is 
and even why he is. Because he joined very willingly. He had Teach's entire crew dead to rights until Blackbeard explained that he had pirates all wrong. These weren't just a band of chums bumming around together, but they're together because they can all profit off their agendas. That's what makes them pirates. He learned there and then that unlike the Marines, he can join a pirate crew and still pursue his agenda. Or in other words, his dream. That's why Teach even added at the very end, you're free now, what do you want to do? Doesn't this all sound kind of familiar? It's exactly like the Straw Hat crew. They each have their own individual dreams, but by supporting Luffy to achieve his, they believe they'll also reach theirs along the way. And many times, the crew member had to be quote unquote freed first in order to make that decision, just like Kuzon was by leaving the Marines first. Zoro was tied up in Shellstown, Nami was forced to work for Arlong, Brooke was stuck in the Florian Triangle until he got his shadow, etc. Once they were all freed from those situations, they had to make a decision where to go and they all chose Luffy. For Kuzon, he needed some direction after his fight with Akainu and subsequent departure as an admiral, and that ended up being Blackbeard. Because very similar to the Straw Hats, they all realize that their goal is more likely to be achieved by following their captain and being a part of the crew. That might be what he meant by telling Smoker, I'm still me. His goals have not changed, it's just that he found a new way of reaching them, and that's through Teach. This is what Hachinosu was meant to show us. He's proving to us that he's not messing around, even if he needs to defeat his old master along the way. I mean, he's already worked for an organization that forced him to do things he didn't want to do, but at least now on Blackbeard's crew, he does so knowing his own agenda could be reached as well. This was not the case before. So then what is this goal of his? Well, I think it has to involve changing or taking down the government as constructed, so that things like Ohara don't have to happen anymore. That's very clearly one of the most influential events for him as a character and as a marine. So for it to then tie to his agenda today as a pirate would just make a lot of sense. And this would also tie to why he's following Teach. Because just recently in Egghead, in one of my personal favorite panels that we've had in a while, we learned that what Teach's crew is after is the world. Kuzan might believe that if cruel events like Ohara are to be stopped, then the entire government needs to change. And that might be at the forefront of Teach's plans in general. And I think there might also be a deeper thematic layer to all this as well, because obviously Kuzan has ice powers, or technically the chili chili fruit. And one thing that we know about the underworld in One Piece is that it's cold. Brook's ice powers come from the chill of the underworld, and V. Nustro seems to have the same thing going on. And you know, given the fact that Teach has darkness powers, collects devil fruits, and seems to be sort of like an evil person in general, I don't think it's that crazy to say there's sort of like an underworld or truly evil vibe coming from the guy. This is actually a major topic in the next video that I'm dropping about why Blackbeard never sleeps, but for Kuzan to then join him who has ice powers, it all kind of just fits too perfectly, especially compared to Luffy, who obviously has the powers of the Sun God, because during Egghead, we've kind of been wondering what Kizaru's actually been thinking, and he has light powers which fit with Luffy's perfectly in this sort of parallel. Now, at least as of the time of recording this video, Kizaru hasn't outright betrayed the government or helped Luffy yet, but we did just see in Chapter 1111 that Kizaru says his wounds run deep, and he just wants to rest. I think it's pretty clear that there's more of like an emotional layer to this, and it sort of implies that he at least wanted to help Vegapunk and the gang, so there's at least something there. I mean, he may still be the guy who gave Luffy the food earlier after all, we don't really know who that was yet, but the point for all of this is just to say that Kuzan being a full-fledged member of Blackbeard's crew just makes a ton of sense, and would definitely be the more exciting option than yet another betrayal, like we've seen in Kaido or Big Mom's crews, with Drake and Beige respectively, because I think we can all agree that the Straw Hats would never betray Luffy, so if he and Teach are meant to parallel each other so strongly and be like two sides of the same coin, then why would Blackbeard have a traitor? He needs a crew behind him and his dream just as strongly as Luffy does, and that's why I think that Kuzan is definitely going to be on his side through the end. So if that is true, then he will need an opponent to face off against when they face the Straw Hat Pirates, and as I said toward the very beginning, I believe that will definitely be Black Leg Sanji, a good matchup for Ice Leg Kuzan, I guess. But I have heard two other popular options before that I think are worth a quick discussion as well, being Robin or Kobe. As for Robin, I think the biggest issue is that she really shouldn't be able to beat someone on the level of Kuzan. I mean, he's a Logia and she doesn't even have armament hockey yet. And even if she did, she'd probably still be a pretty long way away from beating someone like Kuzan. But honestly, that's completely fine. You know, Robin doesn't need to be quite this powerful. She has a much 
bigger role outside of this. But of course, she will still get a 1v1 against a Blackbeard pirate. It'll just be someone else, someone not as strong as Kuzan. And I'll leave a link below to that video as well. But obviously, Robin does have a very deep past with Kuzan, so I think some type of confrontation between the two is warranted. Just not one where Robin, like, defeats him in battle or anything. Because, I mean, he technically saved her back on Ohara, even though he was also part of the Buster Call to begin with. Which makes him being on Blackbeard's crew kind of ironic. Because as we saw with him fighting Garp, he can't play favorites while on Teach's crew. He's got to do his job now as a crew member in order to profit off his agenda. Which is what Teach said all pirates do. So if he and Robin do clash, he may not be able to be quite as merciful as he was on the Marines. Which is some pretty crazy irony given the fact that pirates are the ones who were meant to be more free. So I think they'll definitely have some sort of discussion about this and maybe reflect on their past and how they got here and such, but when push comes to shove, she will probably need someone to come and help her, and who better to do that than Sanji? It would be a great inversion of the Black Maria fight, where Sanji called Robin in for help. He can repay that favor in a big way by taking on someone as strong as Kuzan in her place. Plus, Sanji has been hearing women's cries for help from further and further distances lately, like we saw in Wano and Egghead. And he's been getting there faster and faster. I mean, we just saw him block that laser from Kizaru, which elicited this reaction, which was kind of peak. Plus, Kizaru is more or less on Kuzan's level, since they were both admirals in the past, so maybe this was almost a preview of what's coming down the line. I think it would be amazing if Sanji, like, heard Robin call for help from an entire island away or something like that, but he still got there in time. And then maybe Kuzan would even mention how Sanji's almost as fast as Kizaru, since he would probably know. But then the other option I've heard a lot about is Kobe, and the reasoning for this would be that they get to prove whether Garp's new or old protege is stronger. And right now, you know, there's 11 total Blackbeard pirates and only 10 total Straw Hats. So there kind of needs to be a change somewhere in order to make the lineups work, and Kobe fighting on the Straw Hat side might kind of make sense there. Plus, you know, Garp and Roger did team up before, so this could be some sort of parallel. But honestly, I think Kobe is destined for something even greater than fighting Kuzan. Because if we are going with the parallel that Luffy and Kobe should team up against a rocks esque opponent such as Blackbeard, kind of like Roger and Garp did against the actual rocks, then Kobe shouldn't just fight a crew member. That would be kinda like Garp just facing off against Whitebeard or Kaido back in God Valley. Which like, yes, those fights would be epic and maybe there were some clashes between the two at some point, but Roger and Garp both brought their whole squads with them. There were also God's Knights there who were likely on Garp and Roger's side since they were said to protect the Celestial Dragons that day. That means that there were ample forces available to take on the rest of the Rocks crew, which would leave the top dogs like Garp and Roger to fight Rox Dizabek himself. Something like this seems way more likely to me than just maybe Roger taking on Rox and Garp facing a crew member. It would go to show just how strong Rox really was and maybe how dangerous his plan could have been. Now, to be clear, I'm not proposing that it would be as simple as like Teach vs. Luffy and Kobe in a 2v1, because there is a 0% chance Oda would rob us of the climactic Blackbeard and Luffy 1v1 that we know we're gonna get towards the end of the story, because that'll probably end up as like the best fight in the series. But we do know that Blackbeard has some secret plan going on that we aren't clear about yet, and Kobe has sort of been at the epicenter of it for quite a while. This started all the way back in the time skip with Rocky Port, where Kobe's actions somehow helped Teach get a hold of that island. Then they met again at Amazon Lily, where Teach suspiciously wanted Boa's fruit for part of his plan. And then after that confrontation, Kobe exchanged himself for all the marines that Blackbeard held captive. Then on Hachinosu, Blackbeard outright told Kobe that his goal was to leverage him as a way to get his country recognized as a real nation. Blackbeard is tied to Kobe almost as closely as Luffy at this point in many ways. So whatever Blackbeard's overall plan involves, whether he's trying to maybe unpetrify someone with Boa's fruit, or maybe create some type of zombie using Moria's fruit, which both powers are available within the Seraphim probably, I think Kobe's role will be about stopping that plan from coming to fruition, while Luffy will just be fighting Blackbeard directly. That is a much closer parallel to the Garp and Roger at God Valley situation than just Kobe fighting Kuzan, I think. Or maybe this will all lead to something else even crazier than that. I mean, we've recently seen the Gorosei kind of summon their yokai forms via pentagram circles, and I wouldn't be all that surprised if Rox or Teach had plans to summon something as well. I mean, Rox was said to be involved with the most dangerous taboos in the world, or whatever. But the other layer to this whole Kobe thing in regards to Kuzan is that I think both of these characters need to do something other than fighting Marine-affiliated people. Because I get that Kobe may have some 
some beef over the Garp situation, but his character is about being the right type of Marine, stopping the bad pirates, and saving innocent people. That's what makes him the future of the Marines. If one of, if not the biggest fight in the series that he has is against a pirate that he only has an issue with because of personal Marine-related stuff, I feel like it would really take away from that. He's a selfless guy, and his character arc should lead him to something bigger than just fighting Kuzan. Like, maybe Oda can ramp up what we saw him do against Pizarro, because Kobe destroyed this giant behemoth of an arm to save a bunch of innocent people. Depending on what Teach's overall plan is, Kobe can maybe step in and stop something even bigger and scarier than that from taking out even more people, while Luffy can then just fight Teach in a 1v1. And as for Kuzan, this man definitely needs to do something other than fighting Marines. I mean, in the time skip, he fought Akainu. Then at Hachinosu, he fought Garp and most of Sword. And then if his final fight leads him to just fight Kobe and then lose, it's just like, what was even the point of becoming a pirate in the first place? He needs to fight an actual pirate. By defeating Garp at Hachinosu, I think that was the sign that he's mostly left the marine part of himself behind. And it was a sign that the pirate segment of his life is now in full swing. And this is where Sanji comes in. His flames would have to burn hotter than ever to keep up against Kuzan's ice powers, and especially his potential awakening. Which is why Pudding being kidnapped by Kuzan is sort of key. That's likely going to fuel Sanji in a major way, because he said himself that Diable Jambe is because his passions burn hotter than any real flame ever could. Sanji's emotions have always been a major part of his character, and having those involved in his climactic Blackbeard battle just makes so much sense. And the trauma that Kuzan was at least partially responsible for for Robin is also probably going to fuel him, and he'll need it because it took a guy with magma powers 10 whole days to beat Kuzan. Sanji will need to burn at least that hot to take this guy down. And as we learned with Ace and Marineford, there are kinds of levels to this, because Akainu's magma burned hotter than Ace's flame, thus making it the superior fruit, as Oda mentioned in SBS, and that's basically why he died there. However, Sanji was recently able to unlock Ifrit Jambe, which utilizes blue flames, which can already be hotter than magma. Blue fire is around 2500 to 2900 degrees Fahrenheit, or 1400 to 1600 degrees Celsius, while lava has a very wide range from 1300 to 2200 degrees Fahrenheit, or 700 to 1200 degrees Celsius, and the main point is just that Sanji has already shown the propensity to increase his fire's heat enough to keep up. And he explained in Wano that he was able to do this by using both his Germa enhancements and his hockey. And he is likely to get more comfortable with those bio enhancements, and is definitely going to keep improving his hockey throughout the story, so being able to handle even hotter flames than blue is definitely possible. And I know a lot of people have brought up the idea of white flames before, but those are actually between orange and blue, so Sanji has already surpassed that. The next goal after blue is actually violet. These can be upwards of 3000 degrees Fahrenheit, or 1650 degrees Celsius, which you gotta admit, purple flame Sanji would kinda go hard. But you know, with this being a shonen manga and everything, I wonder if Oda will go even another step further and just give Sanji black flames and truly make him black leg Sanji. Maybe in the world of One Piece, this is just the hottest color of fire or something. It would maybe be a little like Amaterasu from Naruto, and I think this could almost act as like Sanji's own version of an awakening or something, where he kind of maximizes his germ enhancements, his hockey, and even his own mental or emotional state to achieve something special. And something like this is probably going to be necessary because Kuzan seems to have literally awakened his ice devil fruit, and that's probably why Punk Hazard has permanently turned half ice. It seems like Loki awakenings are kind of like a domain expansion almost, so Sanji's likely going to need this kind of heat to combat that, and I think calling it like Sanji's awakening might prove to be more literal than we think, because remember, his dad worked alongside Vegapunk and Caesar back in Mads, who both duplicated devil fruits, and Sanji has swirly eyebrows just like all of his siblings, which even flips sides sometimes, and the one characteristic that all devil fruits share is a swirl, except for the duplicated ones, which is probably important. And this is why there's been theories for years now about how Sanji may literally be a devil fruit, which seems a little odd if you've never heard it, surely, but Oda was asked about his swirly eyebrows in an SBS, and he went on this whole tangent about how important swirls were, and that if the world stopped spinning, there would be tidal waves everywhere, which is also the focus in my Void Century video, so there's something going on here for sure. And just like how Sanji sort of awakened his dormant Germa powers over the course of Wano, there's probably a lot more development to come, especially as he improves his hockey, because he said it was the combination of the two that let him use Ifrit Jambe. And since hockey is already black in color, and his Germa suit was called 
called Stealth Black, I definitely have my money on his final power up being Black Flames. Which fits pretty well with what we've seen from Awakened Zones as well, right? At least the bad ones like Luchi, Kaku, or whatever the Gorosei are. Now those may not be the same type of Black Flames that Sanji will get down the line, because those don't seem to be quite that hot, but the aesthetic is definitely there. And the fact those are closely tied to Awakening specifically is sort of insane in this context. Especially the Gorosei in my opinion, because probably their craziest ability is the fact that they can regenerate. And what did Sanji do in Wano after Queen crushed him? He popped right back into place. Now it's not the same exact thing, obviously. If Sanji got his arm vaporized, I doubt he'd grow it back, but still, I think you know what I'm saying. And I also think that Sanji's version of Black Flames could tie to Black Blades, because as most of us probably know already, most swords are forged under intense heat, usually near that of magma, which makes a lot of sense since that's melted rock, and here you're melting precious metals, and then bending it into the shape of a sword. And you know, I was just explaining how Sanji's flames may eventually burn even hotter than a Kainu can, so if we take that logic just one step further, what if these black flames unlock some special way of forging blades into black blades? What if it's like a new way of forging that most swordsmiths can't use because of the heat? I mean, remember, Onimaru told us that Ryuma forged Shusui into a black blade through his many battles, and then Road to Laughtail later speculated, is hockey alone really enough? Well, if a regular swordsmith tried forging a blade with black flames, the whole forge and anvil would probably just melt. I mean, the blade would probably just turn to liquid. So that's why you also need a lot of hockey. What if certain swordsmen are able to imbue their blades with enough hockey to withstand the black flames, thus leaving it black permanently? This could be what makes their hardness so unparalleled. Which, if that was true, that would be some masterful writing on Oda's part given the rivalry between Zoro and Sanji. Sanji could maybe hold the key to Zoro leveling up his blades even further. And maybe they just forge one of his blades black serendipitously. Imagine they get into one of their many quarrels, but one of them happens after the black flames were unlocked, and maybe Zoro notices that his blade got tougher through the fight or something. Which would be really cool, because if you go and look at the other black blades in the series, like Yoru and Shusui, it could be really fun to speculate on who they fought that had black flames at their disposal. Because for Yoru, I think that might have to be Shanks, because Shanks already has a flaming sword, and his hockey is obviously top tier, so maybe when he gets serious, he can even coat his blade in black flames, sort of combining the two. And then maybe his clashes with Mihawk is what eventually turned Yoru into a black blade. And for Shusui, who knows? I mean, maybe that was like another swordsman back in the day or something, which would be kind of crazy. But if all of this was true, it would just give another reason why Kuzan is the perfect opponent for Sanji. What better way to be pushed to increase the temperature of your flames than against someone with awakened ice powers? This is exactly how Sanji can reach his true potential. Between pudding and the ice versus fire stuff, there is no Blackbeard member that makes more sense to fight Sanji than Kuzan. So that is it for this video, but don't go yet because I do have more for you guys over on my second channel, Redacted, where I have finally uploaded something and will continue to do so after each and every main channel video. And so what these videos are are basically the discussion after the discussion, where another creator and I continue the conversation on sort of an adjacent topic from this video. So for example, this week, Sai joined me for a two hour discussion about each of the other Logi Awakenings that we may see or may have already seen in the story. And you can click to see that above. But until next time, later.